A recent article outlines a couple of trade suitors for the Montreal Canadiens, including one surprise Atlantic Division team that could maybe make a push for one of Montreal's top defensemen. We have to dive into that, but first we got to talk about the Montreal Canadiens versus Washington Capitals. Uri Slavkovsky continues to expand his record point streak. Same thing with Suzuki. New hook scores, Jack Eye scores. There's a lot of great stuff, so you won't want to miss this episode of Habs digest so let's just jump into the game first jesse and well what a game it was yes the habs ended up losing four to three despite some of the best efforts from the team and some lackluster defense really cost montreal in this game three of washington's four goals were guys who were just left unchecked on the doorstep and you can't allow that to happen but the offense is coming as always feel free to pause take a look at the box score but the first thing you'll notice well joshua Watt gets a great assist continuing your slavkovsky leads the team in shots with seven and block shots with six while continuing his point streak, Suzuki scores, Jack Eye scores, New Hook scores. I want to start with uh, with Slavkovsky, Jesse, because we'll get into the other guys after. We got, you know, you're a Chad Kovsky. I mean, how how much better does it get than this guy? He is continuing this this point streak. He straight up looked like one of the best halves on the ice tonight, and the and the game score tells that tale. He was fifth in game score, the best out of anyone on the top line. Um, I, I feel like he just completely dominated every single aspect of this game tonight. And what I really loved was that they were going to him. That's right. Mike Matheson at the end of the game, going to Uri Slavkovsky to tie it up when it really matters. And Uri would have tied it up if it wasn't for John Carlson really saving, you know, by blocking that shot at the end of the game there. So really, you know, they, they're showing that they were right by really going to him, right? So amazing to see kind of the progression over the game. We saw was Matheson going to pass, but as it went on, okay, more and more giving him better looks, you know, giving – you know, passing the puck a little bit earlier to Slav to give him better opportunities to kind of make something happen. So I was really happy to see that at the end because we like Mike Matheson, right? But we just want to see that cooperation. We want to see that teamwork. But, I mean, what's really exciting about this game, Josh, like I think you have to agree is that other teams coming in to play the Habs, they, the game plan is very obvious. They know what they need to do. Stop this Montreal's first line if we can do that. There's not as many threats kind of throughout, you know, so that's definitely the strategy. But the fact that other teams know this coming into play the Habs and that, you know, this first line is still finding success, you know, despite this being so young, it's still very impressive. Slav now going to eight games, Suki now with the 10 point, you know, streak right now, just being able to keep that going. Right. And I love that they're just getting this reputation around the league right now of just, you know, really being able to put up those points. Yeah, points and clutch points. I guess, like, what, like, that tying goal from Suzuki in the third, like, yeah, I mean, there was a rough goal after from Washington, but it's just, it's amazing stuff that they are still coming together and just impressing being, they were probably the most dominant line on the whole ice tonight for both teams, realistically, with Slaff again just showing his dominance. So, anyway, we'll transition off of that. We talk enough about, about Slaff, I think, and I know maybe you guys are getting sick of it, maybe you're not. I'm not, but I know we have to talk about some other guys. Um, my boy Newhook, his first goal back since November, November, uh, of course, just coming back from that injury a couple of games ago. Jesse, I thought he was one of the best halves, not only tonight, but since he's come back from injury, he's fitting in seamlessly on that power play. Uh, well, what were your thoughts on Newhook? Nice to see him get rewarded because, as you mentioned, you know, he has been looking good since he's gotten back. Just kind of slowly takes a little bit of time, but... I mean, the efforts are there, you know, putting yourself in the right positions on the ice. And we see that, you know, clearly it's just about that and you get rewarded. But obviously, this being a regular Charlie Hustle in this game, once again, going hard to the net like a beauty, banging home, you know, that rebound, you know. So it's really great to see, to just see him kind of get, you know, some of his hard work, you know, get that up on the boards a little bit. Because we definitely want to see that continue because, I mean, he can be big for this team kind of going forward and provide a lot of relief to that first line. You know, as you mentioned, you know, kind of getting some good chemistry with some of his line mates and helping Joshua Wah. So I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of having new hook back for that. Yeah, Joshua Wah looked like he's fitting, he's fitting in seamlessly with that new hook and Armia line. Like, again, you would never guess that this guy uh, was an AHL player. I mean, he looks like he absolutely belongs. Awesome stuff. Final thing is Arbor Jack Eye coming in. Oh, man. Like, what a bomb from the point that was just coming in off a rush and blasting it past Kemper. Like uh, unbelievable stuff that was clocked at. I don't know if they changed it, but as of the time uh, that he scored the goal, when I saw it on Twitter, it was clocked at over 102 miles an hour, which makes it the hardest shot from any hab this season, surpassing Mike Matheson's 100 mile an hour shot. I believe that was somewhat recently. I could be wrong. Um, but Jack, I, Jesse, I mean, he's finally getting his chance. I mean, despite the you know, unfortunate injury circumstances, though, Jordan Harris is still skating in practice with a non-contact Jersey. It looks like Jack has got the 
the spot for now, and he's certainly making a case to keep that spot for the foreseeable future. And that was a big goal for him because right now Jaden Struble is kind of up ahead of him on the depth chart playing on that second pairing, right? So this is a big goal for Arbor Jack guy tonight. We know we all love his patented, very heavy wristers, but I mean, I think we all want to start seeing him start taking a lot more of these slap shots because that was powerful. That was almost giving me like Zidane Ochara vibes, Ooh. like taking me all the way back. We know he's a big guy. We know he can fire, right? So I think that that's a really great tool that, you know, we really want to start seeing him use a lot more. I hope so. And I mean, Jack, I looked like, again, one of the one of the better Habs on the ice tonight. I think the if I bring it back up the scorecard, I think he was up there. Uh, yeah, he was right near the middle around Mike Matheson, around Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield. Good company to have. So uh, awesome stuff. Yeah, despite the loss, some really bad defense from that. Uh, Jake Evans surprisingly let the team down a little bit defensively tonight. Same thing with Josh Anderson. But it is what it is. You can't win every game. Habs are one step closer to that first overall pick. And they get some production. They keep some point streaks going. Hey, you know what? It is what it is. Um, but we're going to get into a different article, Jesse. It's an article released a couple days ago, and they kind of dove into some potential Habs trade suitors. And there's a couple things here that are not that out of the ordinary. A couple of teams that we've talked about a bit before, but uh, we wanted to run through these with your guys and uh, with, with you guys and get your opinions on it. The first one we wanted to talk about is the Vancouver Canucks as a potential suitor. Um, and we got a very interesting team coming up at the end of this. So stick around to the end of this segment. But Vancouver, they basically say they're sitting atop the overall standings. We're well into the second half of the league schedule, but they suggest that David Savar could be a fine fit between Philip Ronick and Tyler Myers. Now, I know that the Canucks um, have kind of maybe thought, uh, we're kind of done making moves, but you never really know. You know, they have Myers, Zadora, Ian Quill, and Mark Freeman, all as UFAs after this season. And Savard gets that one extra year of control. Not sure if Vancouver's necessarily looking to fit Savard in. Not sure if Montreal's looking to move him, as we've kind of heard. But uh, it's it's an interesting trade proposal. And I feel like, you know, we, we've had talks about some different players maybe going to the Canucks. And this 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 might make a bit of sense. And I'd love to see the Vancouver Canucks and other Canadian teams like the Jets making these kind of all-in type of moves. And I don't know if kind of getting David Savard necessarily classifies as kind of like an all-in type of move, but it would be a serious commitment all the same. You have to feel like probably a first round is probably involved as well, which, you know, Kent, you know, if you could kind of sweeten this pot there, I feel like he's probably more than open to listen to that. But I mean, you know, David Savard is definitely endearing himself to many a Habs fans for a reason. So it's just a right sort of combination, right? But you have to obviously understand the type of, of experience and, and value that he would bring to the this Vancouver Canucks team going into the playoffs, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on the trade package, right? If they can somehow swindle a first-round pick out of David Savard, I mean, maybe you do it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if Vancouver has the trade package. I don't necessarily think that's you know, a trade that we should be looking out for, but it's an interesting proposition nonetheless. But this one here, Jesse, this is one that has a bit of backing, and they mentioned the Colorado Avalanche. Now, actually, this was posted before that news a couple days ago that, you know, someone from Spit and Chicklets kind of came out and said, hey, he, according to his sources, which ended up not being true, there was an agreement to send Jake Allen to the Colorado Avalanche. Again, not true. I'm sure a lot of you guys heard about that. But they kind of say that Allen is certainly available, and though his last game was a bad one, this is before tonight's uh, start, of course. He's a reliable net miner who posted league average numbers before being destroyed on Super Bowl Sunday, a game that I was at. Ugh. Um, but, Jesse, not only that, Darren Dreger, of course, following that whole Jake Allen Twitter thing, saying he was gone to the Avalanche, Dreger came out and said, no, this isn't happening. However, the teams have had talks around Jake Allen. So I just want to propose this to you. Do you think that that rumor maybe wasn't all a falsehood? Maybe there was some talk. And do you think that this could be a trade that happens? Because I feel like that's a legitimate trade partner that could be looking for Allen services. Yeah, there was smoke, some smoke there for sure. It's just too good of a deal. I feel like probably some money just kind of holding up because that's what's a little bit tough, obviously, for the Avalanche in doing this, right, is they don't got a whole lot of cap space to kind of deal with. So you have to feel like that's maybe kind of part of the hang up there in terms of what the salary retention is. Kent wants to make a trade, but he doesn't want to hold on to a tons of salary. It just would kind of be too much of a lateral move there, right, for Kent to kind of make that. Uh, but at the same time, it really makes sense in terms of looking around the league of teams that really need a battle backup goalie you know the Colorado Avalanche continue to be a great fit as well as possibly like the Edmonton Oilers you know as well now that their starting goal has kind of stepped up his game a little bit leaves the room for a Jake Allen to kind of come there and be a comfortable backup as well so I look for those two teams you know to definitely uh you know be kicking some tires still I don't feel like the general manager Joe Sackick you know and Kent Hughes have had their last conversation here no probably not um but the final team like, I think I think that one's probably the most realistic of the group of this three, Jake Allen to the Avalanche. I, I think we can all kind of agree. 
This one's really, really interesting to me. And it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I don't think I said where this article comes from. It's from A Winning Habit. I might link it down below for you guys. Um, you can go find the top three trade destinations for Montreal. But basically, they said, you know, usually you don't see interdivision trades. But, of course, we saw that big Canucks Flames trade. It's, it's possible. Sometimes stuff like this happens. And their suggestion for the Tampa Bay Lightning, well, Mikhail Sergachev is now an LTIR. He had an $8.5 million cap, uh, cap hit. And they say, heading to the top of the depth chart, Eric Chernak's playing rough and tumbles shutdown roll on the right side. They have two top four defenders, but with Sergachev out, you need Darren Ratter for Nick Perbix to step up. Why not go after Mike Matheson? They say he could fit in really well next to Eric Chernak. Now, that makes sense maybe for this season, fitting it under the cap, but starting next season, the only significant, the only player making over a million dollars that comes off the books next year for the Lightning is Steven Stamkos, and you gotta think he's sticking around. Yeah, maybe he takes a bit of a lesser contract, like he's making 8.5 million this year, I don't think he's going to take $5 million less to fit in that Mike Matheson contract. I don't think this is going to happen, Jesse, just for pure financial reasons, unless Tampa can offload a, a big contract to Montreal. I don't like Tanner Janot, but I don't think they would move him. He's got two years left in his deal at a bit over $3 million. What are your thoughts on Matheson to the Lightning as a fit and and as a maybe you know, actual, like what are the odds of it actually happening? Because I'm, I'm, so, I'm not so high on this. With the Tampa Bay Lightning right now, is like their contention window is closing very quickly. Kind of like a situation almost similar to the Pittsburgh Penguins, where they have really good players, but they're aging. But you feel like you still want to take a kick at the can, very much like the Capitals, until those great players, those Stamkos, those Crosby, those Ovechkins move on. You're competing. You're doing everything you can. Just as Pittsburgh picked up a big offensive defenseman last year in Eric Carlson, this would be such a similar move. With the Tampa Bay Lightning going for Mike Matheson, he does have a lot of value, um, absolutely. But, you know, obviously with the financials there, I'm just hoping whatever deal that we do with the Tampa Bay Lightning in the future, that we're able to fleece him this time because that Sergey Chev deal, that still hurts. So I'm just trusting on Ken. And, you know, when that time comes to, to do us right there. Yeah, for sure. And again, I'm also not even sure Tampa has many of the assets. It feels like they trade every single asset they had in a Tanner Chano trade. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that this is just a trade that wouldn't ever happen just based on the cap situation and the actual assets that they could offer. But you never know. It's an interesting proposition. I and mean, what do you guys think? Do you think there's any chance any of these deals happen? I think a Jake Allen to Colorado, despite all the smoke and mirrors out there, could be a legitimate possibility. We'd love to hear from you down below. But that'll do it for this episode episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And again, thank you for all of you that tune in all the way to the end of the episodes. We really appreciate every single one of you. I'm Josh Goffs, my co-host, Jesse Poitier. We'll catch you in the next one.